for this session on tools for the community. My name is Stephanie Sosnowski and I'm part of the organizing team for this conference, which has been made possible by the Garnett Health Medical Center and by the New York State Parenting Education Partnership that supports parenting educators, parents and caregivers in creating nurturing environments for children to grow up in. Before we begin, I would like to familiarize you quickly with the features here on Zoom. While you are not speaking here in this meeting, we would like to ask you to mute yourself to ensure optimal sound quality for all. You're welcome to leave your video on if you like. We like seeing you. Both the video on and off button as well as a mute button are on the bottom of your screen as an icon of a microphone and a camera. If you have questions during the presentation, you can put those in the chat uh, area and we'll be sure to respond there or during the interactive parts of the workshop. You can also show your appreciation or support by um, using the emoji feature, which should also be at the bottom of your screen. Lastly, depending upon the device you are joining us from, you can choose your view so that you can see multiple people on your screen or just the speaker. You can do that by selecting the gallery view. Finally, please be aware that the session is being recorded. I would like to take this time now to introduce today's workshop leader, Ms. Shannon Desolets. She is the governor appointed program director of the Jesse Lewis Choose Love Movement for the state of New Hampshire. Her role involves outreach and presentations across the state, increasing awareness of the Choose Love program to schools, parents, communities, police departments, EMS, universities, youth groups, pediatric medical offices, hospitals, various organizations, Department of Health and Human Services, Division for Children, Youth and Families, Department of Safety, the Eternal General's Office, Department of Corrections and other state agencies. Everybody, everybody, awesome. <laughs> Shannon is part of the New Hampshire Schools uh, Safety Preparedness Task Force and leads the SEL implementation recommendation. She is responsible for growing the outreach of the Choose Love program even further for the safety and well being of New Hampshire citizens, measuring the implementation of the program and serving to increase connections between people and agencies across the state. Shannon is also a member of the Association of Traumatic Stress Specialists and is a specialist in post traumatic growth. Further, her international work as an MNRI core specialist has served families all over the world with special needs and post trauma. She is also an international instructor teaching the MNRI PTSD course, as well as the Maximizing Brain Potential school-based course. Lastly, Shannon has provided post-trauma recovery treatment in Newtown, Connecticut since the Sandy Hook school shooting. It was through her work there that she was able to bring Choose Love to her home state, leading this mission for New Hampshire, as well as now leading Choose Love ambassadors throughout the world. Thank you and welcome to Shannon. Thank you so much, Stephanie. That was probably the best intro I've ever had. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's, all, it's all you. <laughs> I don't even remember sending that. <laughs> um, I'm so happy to be here with you all. Um, thank you so, so much. Um, I, I definitely want this time to be interactive. So if anybody has questions, feel free to write it in the chat. Um, and we also will, of course, leave time at the end to um, chat and, and talk about any questions or thoughts you might have. Um, in addition to that, I am the director of ambassadors too for our ambassadors nationally and internationally. And I will actually have your New York ambassador join us um, partway through and she's gonna say a hello toward the end of my time as well. So I wanna make sure everybody knew who she was. So as Stephanie very well said. Um, I am the program director here in New Hampshire. Um, we are, the program is in all 50 states and 105 countries, I believe, today. Um, but New Hampshire is the first state to do a statewide initiative because of Governor Sununu. So it's a pretty unique position I'm in. And as Stephanie shared, um, it has really grown organically throughout the state and breaking down silo walls and bringing everybody together in collaboration to improve lives. I am going to invite everybody to be present before we start here. So one of the lessons that we do with the kids is called the brave breath. And it just really helps, I think, doing what everybody does for work and just every day, it's something we forget. 
sometimes is simply to breathe. So I'm gonna start my time with you by just bringing everybody into the present moment. So wherever you're sitting, if you can just be comfortable in your seat, roll your shoulders back and down from your ears, invite your tongue to drop down from the roof of your mouth. It's probably there. <laughs> And then have feet flat on the floor. We're gonna have one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. We're gonna breathe in for a count of four, hold for four and breathe out through our mouth for four. We're gonna repeat three times. So here we go. Breathe in through our nose, blow up that belly like a balloon. Exhale. Good, again. Exhale. And last time in through our nose. Exhale. Ah, thank you. I needed that too. <laughs> Did Scarlett take everybody through this activity in her keynote? Think about a problem. Okay, good, good. I'm glad we can do it here. So what I'm going to ask you to do is you're not going to have to share it out loud or write it in the chat, um, but just think about a problem off the top of your head that you're having. I know this should only take a few seconds. Any problem. If you don't have one, I have plenty you can borrow, but any problem that you're having. <laughs> and then what I'm going to ask you to do, you all have a problem, um, is what I'm gonna, with your mental pen or your actual pen, I'm gonna ask you to write out three to five thoughts or feelings about that problem you identified. And I'll give you a minute to do so. You can either use an actual pen or your mental pen. You're not gonna to have to share. Three to five thoughts or feelings about that problem. Give you a few more seconds. Three to five thoughts or feelings about that problem. Does everybody have your thoughts written down? Okay, so now with your actual pen or your mental pen, I want you to circle any one of those thoughts or feelings that were about a solution to your problem. Ah, thank you for being honest. <laughs> I love honest faces. Did anybody have a solution? Right. This was a huge aha activity for me. Scarlett had me do it. Her therapist had her do it. I walk everybody through this and, um, it is an aha moment. We're not wired to think that way, right? And what happens when we're focusing on our problems? They grow, right? So this is why I'm here today. This is why my governor hired me on for the state is because it's time to make that shift to think solution oriented. And it's a process. We don't naturally do this. So now we're taking baby steps to do this. I have a little video here, just kind of recapping a lot of what Scarlett talked about this morning. Scientific research shows that babies are born gravitating towards compassion. People are not born hating. They have to learn to hate. And as Nelson Mandela said, if they can be taught to hate, they can be taught to love, for love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. I think it's really important that we understand that we all have to take responsibility for what's going on in our schools and in our society. And it's going to be us. We are the ones that are going to fix the issues. And there is something that we can all do. The opposite of the anxiety that we're all feeling about what's going on in our world is action. 
there is something that we can all do. We can all choose love. When we do that, we have things called mirror neurons in our brains, and people mimic what they see, whether they know they're doing it or not. So if we're walking down the street and I smile at you, something in you is going to smile. You're going to turn around and do it to somebody else. This is a scientific ripple effect that we know about. So when we consciously model choosing love, we're not only helping ourselves, but we're helping those around us. And through the ripple effect, we are creating a safer, more peaceful, and loving world. So I just really want to thank you all for being here today. Um, recapping to the wheel that she would have shown you, really in our program, you know, in addition to SEL, we're bringing in the character education as we're now aligned with character.org. And we've brought in lessons that really coincide with societal topics that have come to the forefront over the last several months. Equity and inclusion, for example. We also bring in neuroscience, mindfulness, growth mindset, positive psychology, and post-traumatic growth and resilience. And we must start with ourselves. And then classrooms, schools, homes, businesses, communities. One of the biggest feedback I have received here in New Hampshire from educators and parents and DHHS or DCYF workers is I didn't realize how much I would also gain from this. This is definitely not just for our youth. This is human centric. This is for all of us. And I am so grateful I have had this formula to get me through this very chaotic time of COVID as well. So as I said, um, Governor Sununu, our, our School Safety Preparedness Task Force report was released July 2018, and he did a beautiful job highlighting the need for SEL, and it really became the, the focus of our School Safety Preparedness report, backed up by all the other things that are definitely very, very important. SEL gets to the root to prevent grievances um, and such from happening. Six months after our report came out, the Federal Commission report came out echoing um, a report talking about SEL in the first chapter and also mentions Choose Love. We, um, I miss the days when we're in person in school, but I do believe we will get there. Um, but for now, we adapt and pivot. Um, in February, so right before COVID, um, the governor proclaimed Choose Love Month here in New Hampshire. And I, I have this picture up here for you, even though it's not your state, um, just to really give a glimpse of all those silo walls that broke down. So represented here, we have our commissioner, deputy commissioner from Department of Ed, associate commissioner from DHHS, we have Department of Safety Assistant Commissioner. We have the Commissioner from Department of Corrections. We have Homeland Security, various law enforcement, NAMI, um, former Chief Justice Broderick, who is, um, he is a huge advocate for mental health well-being here in our state and a big supporter of Choose Love. And then, of course, educators, counselors, superintendents, teachers, parents represented. I wanted to make sure you all have a visual, so a video of how to navigate on the website, how to access the home programs and community programs. So if it's okay with you, I'm gonna give this to you now. Um, and if you're like me, I'm a very visual person, you first just simply have to go on chooselovemovement.org and register. Once you register, it then carries on for this. And Nicole, who has done our website, is about to talk. Okay, so after a very quick registration, you will be landing on our Choose Love Connect Community and Program Portal homepage. And as you scroll down the page, you'll see right at the top, of course, we feature the programs that we have created for schools. But immediately following in this middle area, We've added the programs that we created for home, for uh, youth leadership development, and also for communities. 
as well as information about our different extension program partners. Each of these partners offers practices that are complementary to or can further enhance the Choose Love, the lessons that we, cheat, that we teach as part of Choose Love. And each of these partners has customized their program to uh, coordinate with and enhance what we teach in the Choose Love program. And so at any time, you can click on any of these partners and see exactly what their program looks like to enhance the um, value of the Choose Love curriculum that we have already created. Each of these extension partners are also, and their extension programs are also included in every one of our Choose Love course lessons that are taught at schools. So every school that teaches Choose Love has an opportunity to learn about and incorporate these extension programs into the course that they teach, which we just think is incredibly special and makes the program all the more valuable to students. Um, as you roll down this page, you'll see we've got announcements. Uh, every month we create a calendar. So uh, 30 days of Choosing Love calendar. We, uh, you can find out about upcoming events just here. You can join us for discussion boards. We've actually created discussion boards around the uh, For Home program, for example, the community program. And what we're hoping is that this will be a great opportunity for you guys to uh, check in with us, ask questions, share feedback, uh, it's, it's free, it's very easy to have conversations. This is the Choose Love formula for homepage. And this is a Choose Love mom who is uh, reaching out and sharing with us the way she incorporates Choose Love at home. And there's an opportunity here, now that you're a registered member, to reply to that comment or post your own. So again, this is also, a, this is the discussion board area, it's called Idea Exchange. And you can navigate your way through the dashboard by following these upper tabs. Uh, and so we do hope that you will participate in the community conversations. You can also learn more uh, from us. We have so much content that we are excited to share from our blog posts to special interviews that uh, Scarlett Lewis does with various uh, partners and participants and contributors to the Choose Love program. Uh, she does a blog. We have a, an extensive library of videos. And then we put together some special resources for both parents and educators to uh, provide some support during times of need, which especially during uh, our recent uh, uh, COVID outbreak and or need to quarantine, uh, there's been a, an incredible amount of stress and anxiety across the board from parents to children to educators and everybody in between. And so we wanted to share some uh, articles and solutions that we hope will be valuable and supportive to you. Uh, we have a very fun book club that is already started for the month of October, but you it is not too late if you want to click here and get involved and uh, join uh, the book club for September. We are really excited about that, and it's a really fun way. It's actually hosted by Scarlett and her mom and our chief operating officer, Alexis, and her mom. So it's a mother-daughter book club, if you will, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, and then you'll see here, you can find out more about our program partners. So what I would love to do is take, I want to highlight the daily dose. This is a daily email that we send out that is actually probably one of the most favorite pieces of content that we have developed. People absolutely love it. It is a wonderful validation, uh, an example of the way Choose Love is being implemented in a school or home or community around the globe every morning. And it is a beautiful and inspiring way to start your day. It's a free email and you would just click right here in order to join. So I'm going to come back up to the top of our homepage here. And um, 
will focus on the home and community programs. And just as an example, I think I showed, you can click on any of these titles and go directly to the correlated program. This is a wonderful, very brief video introduction by Scarlett that I think is a terrific orientation uh, for parents, for educators, for educators to share with parents, for parents to share with other parents. It's a it's a very concise and powerful introduction to what Choose Love is trying to teach and some of the very positive impacts that we have, um, that Choose Love has on the lives of children and students and frankly parents and educators and business people and small business owners and everybody in a community. It's just an incredible ripple effect that the Choose Love program offers. So we have created a program especially for parents and caregivers uh, called Choose Love for Home. We do offer a version of Choose Love for Home translated into Spanish. But I'll just go ahead and click on this and we'll take a look at Choose Love for Home because actually it's a very robust course offering. Um, but don't be intimidated because it's actually very easy to understand. In fact, what we really uh, went to great lengths to try to accomplish in this program is to distill down to the very basic core concepts that uh, are the foundation of the Choose Love curriculum so that everybody can understand these four basic uh, values that are part of the choose love formula and that we at home and throughout the community understand and can uh, reflect back the same kind of vernacular and language and definitions that our children are learning uh, through choose love at school and so we wanted to make it very very simple there are three tracks in the for home program the first track is a series of self-based self-paced classes sorry about that and what we've done here is we although this was definitely designed to uh, give parents and caregivers a top line understanding of the basic tenets of the choose love formula lovely video here. You'll see this is the grown-up video. We also have included a, a different version, a B version, which is for kids. And this was actually a cartoon video series that was created by uh, Steffi Bierman, one of the developers of our curriculum. And it's just a nice way to provide something for your children uh, in case they're not learning Choose Love at school or in case you have very young children who haven't started to learn it. Um, all of you can learn together each of these tenets from courage to gratitude to forgiveness to compassion and action. There's a video for grown-ups. There's a video for kids. And there's a practice video which actually shows you one of the skills or tools that we offer uh, to help everybody manage and practice these, these character values. So for example, the breathing technique, uh, in this case, the brave breath, we actually walk you through uh, a, a video example of that. And just to kind of clarify, this video is no more than five minutes, probably three minutes, okay? It's a three minute overview and that it includes a practice video that includes the brave breath. And then we've actually created some opportunities to practice uh, some examples for ways you could practice this courage, for example, this, this pillar of the choose love formula at home and also some discussion topics that you could discuss at home. My vision, of course, <laughs> is that these would be dinner table discussion topics, but even I don't necessarily have dinner every night um, with the whole family the way I should. We're all so busy and running all over the place, but this is nice because it gives us some discussion starters, ways for us to bring up these, these values at home and to reinforce these values for our children, really whether or not they're being taught these values at school. So for each one of these, and then there's a printable. So for each of our values, we also have a 30-day calendar. And these are fun because these are calendars that will walk you through 30 different ways to practice this particular 
value, character value um, on a day-to-day -day basis. This is printed. You can, you can read this online. You can blow it up to full screen. You can download it very readily here, download it and print it. Um, we have tried to give this to you guys in a very flexible format. We would love, down here you can see, we would love if you gave us your feedback um, and a quick comment or suggestion because that will allow us to continuously improve the way we are, we are doing this. So this is track A. You can watch a video. You can kind of go at your own pace. There's a video for the children if you need it. There are some practice uh, discussion topics. This format is beautiful for um, a book club format, for example, or a church group meeting. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful format to support uh, both quick learning of key concepts and discussion and practice of those concepts. Um, that is our track A self-paced class. We also offer a track B. These are pre-recorded videos. These actually were videos that we created uh, very early on in the quarantine process. And what we did was we put together a 20-minute video actually with myself and my children assisting where the it's about a 15 to 20 minute lesson. It's designed to be for caregivers and kids, relevant to both age levels. It includes an overview of the topic of the um, character value. It includes an activity to support that value. And then it also includes a little assignment uh, with some activities okay these are some printable activities that you can you can do that are related to the lesson um, in this case this is the courage to support each other um, so these are window window postings that can be colored in or your child could create their own um, but again these were pre-recorded so it's a little more formalized in terms of you know, a class format, and we, uh, it's about, it's a 10 day program. So we cover, we take two days to cover courage, two days to cover gratitude, then forgiveness, then compassion and action. Um, and it's, it was a lot of fun to produce. We had a lot of really wonderful feedback on how well we were able to maintain the attention of, of our little friends between you know, about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and I would say that the ideal age for this is probably grade three, but we had preschoolers who were very engaged and we also had kids who are a little bit older in fifth grade who got quite a lot out of this as well. So that is track B and those are our video classes. And then we also have what we call the Masterclass Series. If you are interested in really digging down into the foundational root um, understanding of emotional intelligence and how neuroscience impacts our ability to make that choice to choose love, we offer these video sessions. These are, I'm going to say, maybe more like 10 to 15 minute videos. They're very rich and robust in terms of the information and detail that they offer, but it is sort of like a master class for those of you who really want to go further and learn more about where the Choose Love program came from and, and the, the, the evidence-based foundation of the program. This is a wonderful way to do that. Uh, we do offer uh, some additional resources, of course, at the end of this, as well as a list of our extension programs so that you can learn about and potentially incorporate into your everyday practice some of these beautiful ways to uh, support your ability to choose love and your ability to model choosing love for your children uh, and the children in your care. So that is, I won't go much longer. I think that's sort of a nice introduction. Um, you can 
uh, there's a volunteer center here. If you'd like to get more involved, we welcome everybody's participation in helping get this no cost program in front of as many schools and or caregivers and into communities as possible. So you can check out our volunteer center. Uh, we again invite you to check out our discussion boards when you're ready to return to that main login page. You just click connect home. It takes you back to our dashboard. And thank you so much for your interest in choosing love. Uh, we hope that you find this resource useful. And uh, please, by all means, send us any feedback you have as you go through. Thank you again, and have a wonderful day. Okay, so that was Nicole. She has worked very, very hard on our website. If anybody has any questions or um, difficulties on the website, we definitely welcome you reaching out um, ASAP so we can take care of it for you and help you navigate it. This is just, I wanted to share some of the different ways um, people have used Choose Love out in the community. Um, this was a school not here in New Hampshire, but Connecticut actually. Um, they had their kids sending um, supportive messages and notes to healthcare workers right now. So, Here's a jar of little notes. And then they were very, very happy to receive them. So different ideas here. We actually had a mayor of Danbury, Connecticut. Um, they had Scarlett on presenting to his group. This is my governor here and my first lady um, and good friend now, Valerie Sununu. With Scarlett, we, we had Scarlett on for the DCYF Youth Summit this year. Choose Love was the main theme for that. And the ripple effect of that has, has just been remarkable of what's come from that day. This is one of our community nights. So pre-COVID, of course, it was in person. Scarlett and I have done many community and parent nights after staff from schools had me in presenting and they started the program. They then wanted to host to have parents and community members in so they too can learn about Choose Love. So that's always an option for you as well. We know it'll be virtual right now, but um, still something very, very um, important. Our former Chief Justice John Broderick, I mentioned him earlier, he was there that night and a huge advocate for anything to support mental health. And especially as we all know, the need has just only grown over the last several months. We have reached out through Choose Love to help military members. So this Sergeant Webster was part of one of our live at home lessons that, that Nicole just talked about. And the kids wrote cards of encouragement um, to him. And I had sent him a duck over in Iraq. <laughs> Another card to a major um, here from one of our students. Hanover Police Department here in New Hampshire hosted a night for parents and communities. The, parent, the police departments have taken off with this. They became early on one of my biggest advocates. Of course they want this. When they get called and it's too late, something has happened. So this is proactive and preventative. I walked into the captain's office one day and he had one of our choose of cal calendars taped to the side of his filing cabinet. And then he did go around and had his officers doing the daily tasks. So it's just really fun for me, especially to see the neat little ways people are incorporating this. And I just wanted to share these with you to plant some seeds, maybe give some ideas. Maybe you know a police department that you wanna to talk to or vice versa. So this was also from that night. We had lots of law enforcement there from the state level and local level. And it's interesting, right? You wouldn't expect those in uniform to be the biggest advocates for choose love. <laughs> you know, choose love used to be probably taboo talked about in the workforce. And now in 2020, especially post COVID, it is vital. It's absolutely crucial that we are bringing this forward. We also have done a lot with bus drivers. So schools that I work with, they bring this forward to the bus drivers or PTOs um, might organize something special for them. I went in on a Saturday and there were 200 bus drivers showed up and I was astounded and my heart um, both felt full and broken at the end of it when one came up to me and said, thank you for making me feel important. 
So there's so many ways to extend this throughout the community and to bring everybody together. It's all about connection, no matter who we are, no matter our age, no matter our background, we are all the same and the need to have that authentic connection. And that is what Choose Love does. This is just an example of different law enforcement on the right is a chief of police my town here in um, New Hampshire. Yes, I have planted rubber ducks all over the state. <laughs> yes, the governor's desk has one <laughs> and other key people throughout the state. This is just an example too. United Way invited me in to speak for United Way Coffee and Conversations. And then they then wanna collaborate and, and find ways they can help spread it through the community too. So perhaps you know more people in these organizations as well. Department of Corrections for the Choose Love training. The commissioner told me it was the first time she's ever seen such enthusiasm from her staff about an initiative. So we are currently working on modifying the program using universal design for learning to be completely appropriate for DOC. And then that can be shared um, with other states as well. Did Scarlett show this video? Okay. So we're not going to do that. Um, injury prevention team. So one of our area um, clinics called me in to present to their team as well. We also have, um, so different pediatric offices have had me in, different hospitals have had me in. Pediatric offices are now handing out the pamphlets. They have Choose Love stuff up on the walls because they see the other side of this when these issues aren't addressed and the anxiety is rising and health issues in kids. Um, so they're handing out pamphlets to help parents um, and to introduce them to the home program. This was just a fun little example. Um, the school put on a Choose Love adult prom. So the, the students actually voted on what they wanted to do for a fundraiser for their senior project. And this is what they chose. So this happened last year, so fun. Here's one of um, our pediatric offices that I mentioned. Um, that one of the mayors in one of our major cities here, um, their opioid task force legislative breakfast asked me to come in to present on Choose Love. As we know, the opposite of addiction is connection and connection is love. So we need to bring in Choosing Love and SEL throughout the communities. Here's that quote there from the FBI director. Scarlett probably showed that this morning. And just recapping again, Scarlett went through all this, I'm sure, the benefits of SEL, why we're all here, why we want to come together and bring this forward even more. And really being the change we wish to see in the world, right? So here's Scarlett and I at one of our area schools. It really comes down to all of us um, being part of the solution. Champions Choose Love is our athletes and coaches program. I have I've had people utilizing us. I didn't even know we're utilizing it. And then they told me just how much it's changed the whole dynamic of the team and collaboration. Of course, you know by now well about the Choose Love for Home and Choose Love for Communities. This is an example. Uh, so Bentonville, Arkansas. Scarlett is originally from Arkansas. This is an example of a town city coming together and really doing a big thing for choose love this is just a short little video it might be a little loud so you might have to turn down your body like welcome to the field scarlett lewis the founder of the jesse lewis choose love movement Well, I'm Ms. Scarlett Lewis. Uh, Ms. Lewis spoke to our faculty and teachers back in August. I'll be there. I'll be signing books. We're going to be having games. And awesome. It's going to be great. We're going to be having a lot of fun.
choose love day in and day out. Thank you very much. So that's an exa beautiful example. I, I We were supposed to do something like that here in New Hampshire and then COVID happened. So I do look forward to the day we can do it. It gives me goosebumps watching that and just seeing everybody coming together. Recapping again, the cognitive triangle that she would have talked about, our thoughts impact our feelings, which then impact our behaviors. I'm sure she read this quote to you and this really, really rings true in our lives. So I'm just going to repeat it because it's so important between stimulus and response. Stimulus is anything that happens to us. It could be COVID. There is that space. And in that space lies our freedom and power to choose our response. And our response lies our growth and our freedom. Viktor Frankl, of course, is a Holocaust survivor. He wrote The Man's Search for Meaning. Um, this is a great opportunity, too, to put a plug in again for our book club, which Nicole talked about on the video. If anybody would like to join us, we would love to have you. I'm very, very excited because this month we have Dr. Edie Eager. She is also a Holocaust survivor. And the book we are reading is The Choice. And it's in we she's going to be on live with us on December 30th. So I'm so excited for that. She's a remarkable, remarkable human being. And of course, the message, right? Something for us all to um, remember and think about. And I would ask that all of us do self-reflection too on how we are showing these tenants in our everyday lives, courage, gratitude, forgiveness, compassion, and action. Where are we doing really well? Where could we use a little bit of help and do more? Um, I, again, I am so grateful for having this formula in my life. Um, it's definitely got me through and is getting me through some pretty stressful times at the moment as well. And she went through all of these stats with you, I'm sure. So we're not gonna repeat all this, but as you know, all these stats that she shared are pre-COVID. So we can only imagine where things are at now which makes me so happy that you all have come together to learn more about this. She showed this slide, yes, I'm sure. Um, okay, so who do you wanna be during COVID? Let's just use COVID as the example, right? Initially, we're in this fear zone. That's when the toilet paper is being hoard, hoarded <laughs> and different things. And let's just pick one of these things. Um, I complain frequently growth through that. So think about post-traumatic growth in the learning zone. I become aware of the situation, how I think and act, and then truly in the growth zone, I think and appreciate others. So really a model of how we can use this, not just today, but every day in our lives going forward. What we're really doing too is helping to get people out of stress brain so there can be better emotional regulation. So then we can learn through our cortex as well and have clear thinking. I like this slide. Um, I'm sure people on social media have seen five regrets of people on their deathbed. The, the five benefits of post-traumatic growth completely counteract those regrets. And we all have these moments in our life. For me, one of my biggest PTG moments was seven years ago, laying in a hospital bed and, for 19 days and I almost did not make it out. My body was failing and they could not figure out what was happening. I can sincerely sit here today with you all and say one of the best things that ever happened to me was almost dying because it completely gave me a different perspective on life. It removed a veil I didn't even know was present and show me what was important and not important. One of these things too, I wish I had let myself be happier. The other side, greater appreciation for life in general. She went over all these benefits for SEL. Again, our extension programs, which Nicole talked about our calendars, and then really just coming back to this iceberg model again, I'm sure she talked about. So really what is below the surface, what is really below the behaviors that we're seeing, if we can get to the root cause of it. And of course the gunman had a lot of issues in all these years prior from his backpack in first grade being filled with birthday invitations, going to school and giving out the invitations and not one student came to his birthday party or the book that he wrote in fifth grade, the book of granny, where he went into a, the, a witch went into a classroom, the top of her broomstick transformed into automatic rifle and she shot kids. And that's a pretty major red flag being waved in fifth grade saying these thoughts are in my head. So, and he was bullied incessantly throughout the years as well. So there's always something below that surface leading up to this. And unfortunately, the help wasn't there that he needed. 
and really just going through the tenants again, just coming back to self-reflection. How are we modeling this in our everyday lives? Where can we do better to, I'm constantly checking in with myself, but also showing the amount of love that we give to others to ourselves. So I'm gonna please ask you to remember self-care. Remember forgiving yourselves as well. We're all gonna have bad days. We all have them. Um, show yourself as much love as you're giving out to others as well. And compassion for self, truly. Um, let's see. Oh, this is what I wanted to do. It's talking of self-compassion, before I introduce Stacy. I have a little video. I wanted to leave you with a gift for self-care techniques. This is an example of one of our extension programs, the Tapping Solution. I wanted to do this with you all today. So you can leave today feeling the benefits of this. Hopefully you do. Um, is everybody willing? Are you wanting to do this, the Tapping Solution? Has anybody heard of the Tapping Solution before? Okay, great. They, the Ortner family has just been remarkable for the Choose Love formula. Alex, um, is the brother of Nick Ortner and they together with along with their sister, Jessica, they've created this foundation living right in Newtown and has been tremendously helpful for the Newtown community, but across the world as well. And they're, um, they have free um, apps. There's an app that you can do on your phone with a lot of free exercises on there. And then for educators and caregivers, an, an extensive for a year, it's free as well. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna play this video. This video, I'm it's about self-care. I know you're finally back at school and around your friends again, and there's a few changes in some ways and lots of changes in other ways, and all of this change can lead to being frustrated, to being overwhelmed. So even though he's addressing students right now, I want you to think about for your own selves and where you're at as well, okay? Oops, sorry. Why is this not playing now? Hi there, my name's Alex, and in this video, I'm going to teach you about a technique known as tapping. I know you're finally back at school and around your friends again, and there's a few changes in some ways and lots of changes in other ways, and all of this change can lead to being frustrated, to being overwhelmed, to being stressed or anxious, and the challenge is that that not only doesn't feel good in our body and in our brain, but it also keeps us from learning well, from doing our best at school, and from having a good time. So what I'm going to teach you today is a technique known as tapping that you can use to calm yourself down, to feel more comfortable and safe in school, and to prepare you to learn and do your best at school. So let's go ahead and all take a deep breath in together and breathe out. I'm going to teach you the points first, and then we'll actually go through the tapping while focusing on whatever you're feeling right now. So the first point is the karate chop point. It's the side of the hand. You can do it on one hand, you can do it on the other hand, whatever you prefer. You just do light tapping on that point. The next one is the eyebrow point. It's right on the inside of the eyebrow. You can do one side, you can do the other side, or you can do both sides. Next one is the side of the eye. It's right on the bone, right on the side of the eye. The next one is under the eye. The next one is under the nose. It's right in between the nose and the lip. The next one is on the chin point. It's right in that crease on your chin. The next one is on the collarbone point. You can go find your collarbone, go down an inch, out an inch. It's right around there. You don't have to get it right. You don't have to get it perfect. You can use one hand. You can use both hands, whatever you prefer. The next one is the armpit. Sorry, it's under the arm. So if you find the armpit and you put a, your hand there, it's about a hand width underneath the armpit, right under there. You can go one side. You can do the other side or both sides together. The next one is the top of the head. There's lots of different points here. This is where you get to look like a monkey. No, I'm just kidding. You don't, you're not going to look like a monkey. This is perfectly normal when we do the tapping. <laughs> so lots of different points here you can move around. So those are all the different points that we do when we do the tapping. And so what we want to do when we do the tapping is we want to focus on something that's bothering us. Because when we tap on these points, it'll actually send a calming signal to our brain, letting us know that it's safe and that we can relax. Right, so just think for a moment right now and just feel into your body. Take another deep breath in and breathe out. And just notice what you're feeling. And I wanna measure just how safe you're feeling, how comfortable you're feeling, how anxious you're feeling right now on a scale of zero to 10, where 10 is you're feeling 
nervous or anxious or overwhelmed, whatever that might be, you're really, you're really, really anxious or overwhelmed. Zero is that you're fine. You're totally comfortable being in school. You feel fine. You feel safe. You're ready to learn and you're totally focused and ready. That's a zero. You pick the number between zero and 10 that feels right for you. There's no right or wrong answer. You don't have to tell anybody if you don't want to just notice what that number is for you and just say that to yourself inside your head, right? You got that number. Okay, awesome. So now we want to go ahead and start doing the tapping. And when we do the tapping, I'm going to say a statement and you just repeat after me what I say. And, and then we'll just go through the tapping through the different points. All right. So starting on the karate chop point and just repeat after me, even though I'm a little anxious about being back at school, I acknowledge and accept what I'm feeling right now. Again, on this karate chop point, even though I'm a little worried about being back at school, I choose to be calm and patient. And again, on this point, even though there's lots of new rules, I choose to be calm and patient. Now we're going to go to the eyebrow point. Again, you can do one side, both sides, whatever you prefer. Just repeat after me. All these changes. Side of the eye. It can be a little overwhelming. Under the eye. All these new rules to learn. Under the nose. I don't know if I'm doing the right things. Chin point, but that's okay. Column point, I choose to relax in my body right now. Under the arm and know that everything is okay. Top of the head, I can learn the rules one day at a time. Eyebrow point, knowing that I'll find my way there. Side of the eye, I might not like all the new rules. Under the eye, I might not agree with all the new rules. Under the nose, but I know they're there to keep me safe. point my teachers are doing their best column point so I choose to do my best today under the arm even though things are different top of the head I can still learn and do my best today Eyebrow point, I choose to breathe into my body. Side of the eye, knowing that everything will be okay. Under the eye, I choose to have a great day today. Under the nose, to do my best to learn. Chin point, to be kind and patient with others. Problem point and to be kind and patient with myself. Under the arm, I'm doing my best. Top of the head, and I might make mistakes. Eyebrow point, and that's okay. Side of the eye, I'm here to learn. Under the eye and do my best. Under the nose. So I choose to have a great day today. Chin point. To be calm and patient. To be kind to others. Under the arm and patient with myself. 
top of the head, everything is okay. So let's stop there and take a deep breath in and breathe out. Just allow your body to move a little bit. And just notice what you're feeling. So what we want to do now is to check in again with how we are feeling. We measured in the beginning on that scale of zero to 10 to see how stressed or anxious or overwhelmed we were. So if before you were at a seven, try and measure and see where you are now. Has that number come down a bit? Are you at a six or a four or a three now? Just you feel and, and decide what number is best for you and just notice that in your body. So this is just a simple technique that you can use at any time to help yourself to feel calmer, to feel safer, to enjoy being at school so that your brain can function, so your body feels safe, and so that you enjoy being around your friends and your teachers, and you're able to learn and do your best. Remember, you can use this at any time that you want. I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, keep tapping. I know that helped me. Did it help others on here? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think we're just going to end with this slide here, which you saw with, with Scarlett, just as a refresher as well. So our path to flourishing, uh, we, we begin with courage, courage to be present, and being in that discomfort, facing fears, which leads to our gratitude and positive awareness and acceptance. Forgiveness, of course, is our freedom. It cuts the cord to that pain a choice to do so. Compassion and action is our purpose, empathy, and service. This is what you all do day in and day out. And choosing love, our personal responsibility, which leads to flourishing and having fun. Um, I am actually going to stop screen share. Did it stop? Yes. <laughs> and I noticed the chat here too. There's many things in here. Um, I want to take a minute to introduce Stacy Orzel to you all. She is the New York Choose Love Ambassador. So Stacy, I know you're on. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Shannon. It's my pleasure. Uh, Scarlett was very proud of you to have more attendance in your talk for this afternoon uh, as our chief movement officer. I started with her and then hopped off to join. And it's really wonderful that we're being able to spread our message to so many leaders in our Orange County and Delaware County community and perhaps some others that have joined in thanks to Yulika and her wonderful team helping to market and spread our message to get more people to listen and participate in our conference. I've uh, been proudly participating on her parenting coalition through Cornell Cooperative Extension here in Orange County for a very long time. And uh, there are always great takeaways and teachable moments. I, like you, have a short activity for the group. Everyone, I want you to think about three people that are your go-to persons, that are your, your, who are your three favorite people? Take a minute and, and register them in your mind. Could be an adult could be a child, could be uh, a neighbor, a friend, a coworker, a relative. Think of three. Okay, uh, everybody, let's see a nod. You have three people you're thinking about? Was yourself one of them? Teachable moment. Think of yourself first. It's a good lesson. I can't take pre uh, 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 onus for that particular activity. I picked that up in a proactive caring workshop. I participate with Dr. Lawrence Force at Mount St. Mary campus. Uh, I'll put that resource in the chat box as well. We have some downloadables on how to reduce stress and anxiety with that group, which is great. So that's an important lesson as we think forward and we're growing forward in what Scarlett calls our brave new world. And we are um, putting emphasis as we reframe our thoughts around importance, pausing in this COVID and, and making considerations for family and friends and communities. So uh, I, I think that that has a lot of value. I also wanna thank you, Luca. A few important takeaways for me yesterday I participated in both the panel in the morning and then in the afternoon, I sat in with 
uh, Dr. Tamei Memoli, and she had a really great comment that I wanted to make sure if you weren't participating in that group that I would share this and maybe it will resonate for you the way it did for me. She talked about behavior, which also lends itself to an analogy to our cognitive triangle that Shannon shared a few minutes ago. She, she emphasized behavior and feelings and she was talking a lot about proactive factors uh, for families and children especially. And she described a child have a hard time uh, sorry, I'm getting a call I wasn't expecting. And I'm not smarter than my smartphone. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for indulging me. Uh, she shared a cool concept where she said, the child is not giving a hard time. In other words, having a momentary meltdown, uh, having what seems like a moment of bad behavior, perhaps frustration, but the child is having a hard time. And she used the phrase of flipping the script. And I thought, what a great way to explain that. And we talk a lot about that in our Choose Love Movement teachings, where we try and change a thought, change an angry thought to a loving thought, how to flip the script. And that really resonated for me. So I wanted to just highlight that, uh, that important point. Also, another really great takeaway for me was Dr. Alicia Pointer, the chief of pediatrics at Cornerstone Healthcare, spoke in the panel discussion, and she had a wonderful experience to share how she administers a shot for a child. This is a very short experience, right? Boom, you're in, you're out. It could be, you know, no more than 10 seconds by the time the helper brings it from the lab and she administers. But she takes the time and she makes the time to utilize what I've learned to call a social story where she says, well, first we're gonna clean this area and then we're going to, it's, it's gonna feel a little cold and then we're going to give you the shot and then we're gonna put on a Band-Aid and then you get a sticker. So she talks through the first then experience. She trailed through a few of the steps helping the child and the, and the parent modeling, setting the example for the parent, how to help the child go through and receive the experience and being able to set that expectation and have a teachable moment, educating the family and the child through that. And that was great. I thought that she really had her finger on the pulse of making that experience very positive for both the family and the child and, and making that teachable. So I'm excited to be New York's first ambassador of the Choose Love movement. It's been a great uh, effort on my behalf to become certified back in May. I met Scarlett at the Monroe Woodbury School District last October. She was speaking to the Special Education Parent Teacher Association and I approached her after the meeting, after wiping my tears and hearing the story first time. And I said to her, how can I do more with this movement? How can we spread this message more? And she said, we're looking for a New York ambassador and they're planted a seed and the tree has grown. And I'm excited to be able to help empower and bring this movement to more agencies, schools, and families right here in our community. We've worked already with Ulica in the past to be able to talk about implementation in schools and communities. And we will continue to do this. Some lead schools right now are in Port Jervis as we met uh, our su associate superintendent yesterday. We also have Monroe Woodbury, Chester School District, Cornwall, and a few others. So we'll continue to grow this. We are always looking for ambassadors. So if our message is really resonating for you and you're interested, we'd love to have a dozen ambassadors right here in New York. So if, if that's something that you think or you know someone that may be interested, I am a volunteer. And in time, I hope to become a professional development trainer of the varied uh, trainings that we're able to do. So that's a side note as well. We have a youth ambassador group and Shannon leads all of our ambassador meetings. We all train bi-weekly. The adults train in a different meeting than the youth. 
And that's great because this is a leadership opportunity and a national opportunity for youth. Uh, anybody looking for National Honor Society volunteerism, this is a great way to get involved and put initiatives and, and help make the movement even bigger. Uh, that's really great. So I also like to uh, talk about as a parent of a child with autism, I have two wonderful boys. My Jason is an honor student in 11th grade here in Goshen and his younger brother, Eric is in eighth grade in a smaller class and he's doing great. He works really hard every day. They're both full-time remote learners. This has been super challenging for them and me in different ways. And that leads me to the message that connects to the Choose Love movement. All of our programming is very adaptable for all learners. And I put a message about this in the box. So I wanna make sure that everyone on our call understands that I work closely with our education team and our leaders to be able to say out loud, all our lessons need to be adaptable to be made into smaller parts and using more visuals. Not all learners can learn uh, and, and oh, excuse me, all learners can learn, but all learners sometimes need additional repetition, smaller lessons and smaller parts to be able to really reinforce the activity or the lesson being taught. So this is a great message for leaders and educators to know you can confidently go on our website. It does take a registration and a sign in, which is free, chooselovemovement.org and navigate to a lesson, say for first grade or say for the at home module, like Shannon put on the board earlier or for the community module where maybe an agency or an organization wants to implement pillars of the formula into your teams that you're training and use the train the trainer model. So if you go to our website, it's intuitive and the teams that are building the content are listening to messages to make sure our material can be adaptable. All the links on the website are live, which is nice. So an, uh, a presenter can click uh, and be confident that that will bring up the video or, or so we hope we, we're learning with technology. Sometimes it takes one or two tries. And, and also know that our site is uh, comprehensive where if you play a video link, say from YouTube, it will not roll to the next automated lesson. It stops there. They've put a uh, proactive security in place where just the YouTube video that's selected for the, for the lesson is live. Uh, so teachers know that they can then go back to the lesson and YouTube is not going to per se just continue to roll. So it's very exciting. It's a great time to be able to spread the message of social and emotional learning, bringing it to anywhere, to all, people of all ages. And like Shannon said, starting in prenatal, uh, we recently spoke to the early intervention group and uh, we have therapists confidently being able to implement some of our lessons uh, through therapy and uh, it's really just wonderful. So I will again put my email in the, uh, in the chat box. There were a lot of resources that I shared when I first popped into the meeting. If you can scroll the chat box back up. If you have any questions at all, contact me. If, if for some reason you missed getting a hold of me, uh, Ulica has all my information and I'm always happy to share. I am grateful for all of you who are in attendance today. I have gratitude uh, and I am very excited about the mission. It's only recently that I'm popping on because I'm so much more confident with the message than in the beginning. I attend trainings regularly and I really believe in the movement and I believe that Jesse has hand selected me for this position and I thank him and I thank Scarlett and I believe that Jesse also uh, welcomed all of you to join us and listen today so thank you especially from the top Yulika and your team you continue to make me proud uh, I'm, I'm happy to be in the infield with you thank you so much thank you Shannon you did a great job oh, my pleasure to be here thank you Stacy. Thank you all for, first of all, organizing this and, and attending. And now is the time, if you have any questions for Stacy or me, we are 
we're here for you to support and serve you. Um, otherwise, you have our emails. Something might pop in your mind later on. Um, we're more than happy to, to assist. Mm. I just want to add um, real quick and thank you both so much as well. And um, really, it's great to meet you here, Shannon and Stacy. Yeah, to have you in our community and, you know, across really all regions here. Um, I just want to kind of reiterate the fact that the resources are also really useful for um, other communities outside of schools, for adults, for places of work, for teams, and so forth. And really thinking about how you can implement some of these really small um, aspects even into your team at work or, um, you know, whatever teams you're part of, if you look at the extent of your own communities, I think is a really um, awesome resource because that contributes to building that resilience or growing resilience as we're um, hoping to do across, you know, um, different sectors and uh, different communities. So just to say that these, um, it's really amenable. And I think that you all did a really wonderful job at putting that together in that sense. So So well said, thank you so much. Yeah, it's it's been pretty amazing to see it spread here um, well beyond school walls through the communities and homes and different area agencies and parent information centers and, and whatnot. So um, it is very flexible and people find different ways to bring it in. And um, it, it's pretty, it's, it's phenomenal. It is, it truly is, and it is life changing. And yes, um, Stacy just wrote subscribe to the daily dose that was in the video that Nicole did. Um, that's neat because you get a daily dose of love coming to your email box. And it's, it's a positive thing to start your day with and to see how other communities or schools or families throughout the country and the world are, are utilizing choose up as well. So there's always neat ideas people gain from that. Um, and people sharing personal stories as well. Stacey. I'm sorry, my older son, Jason, who's a youth ambassador, was asking me a question and talking about physics in, in my right ear. Can you repeat what was the question to me? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I just thought you raised your hand. I thought you wanted to say something. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was giving Jason a gesture. Well, tell Jason I said hi, and I look forward to seeing him. Soon. I certainly will. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if you have questions that come or thoughts or ideas that you have, you have a tremendous, you are very blessed with your ambassador, Stacy. tremendous research, um, re resource and energy and passion for this. And if anybody's interested in wanting to become an advocate or ambassador, um, my email I put in the chat, you look at has it as well. And um, I would be the person you reach out to to start coordinating that too. And just a note to everybody, uh, if you are interested in getting any of the information that's in the chat, there are three little dots in the chat box and you can just click on that and you can save all the information, you can download the information there. I can't believe it is this late into COVID and I had no idea about that. <laughs> what those three dots were? Uh, you just have to remember where you saved it to, that's all. <laughs> hey, that's great to know. I usually do copy all. You can do same thing, same thing. All <laughs> and copy and paste it into a Word document. But thank you, the three dots, of course. <laughs> That's funny. So, does anyone have any questions? Well, we've got Shannon and Stacy here with us. We have a couple of minutes. You just have to unmute yourself. I'll repeat something that I put in the chat box. I wanna say the tapping really can be great for kids. Um, my son was stressing about homework and uh, although he doesn't get a lot, but he was finishing an assignment, uh, my younger son, uh, and I taught him to tap through uh, and we talked you know, through what he was experiencing similar. To, so Alex's language about back, being back to school you can modify to any scenario. Mm -hmm. So today's homework is really stressing me out. I know my teachers mean well. I, I'm going to do this and take a worker's break, and then I'm going to come back and complete the assignment. You can modify that language and that simple script that Alex talked us through 
and be able to tap on all the points, which by the way, was originally developed for military to help reduce PTSD in uh, returning soldiers and in the, in the uh, field. And now is available as a technique for anyone to use. So I encourage this as a coping skill, uh, by all means, teach it to, to children and uh, it can be used in a small, medium or large group setting as well. And I find it very useful and it's great to be able to teach something to a child that they can then own themselves. And so if he's in the moment, uh, he knows he has tapping as a perhaps coping skill to you know, get him over the hump. Rachel. Hi, Hi. I, just on behalf of the Orange County Youth Bureau, I wanna thank uh, the Parenting Coalition, Cornell Cooperative Extension. It's nice to see Stephanie. I haven't seen you in years. It's been a long time, so right? <laughs> COVID does have some blessings. Um, but I, I think this has just been a great couple days. It's nice to, to hear such positive messaging. Um, I've heard it through, a, through different avenues. I know Stacy brought it to our Orange County Think Differently initiative. Uh, but it's nice to see a lot of names here that I don't know. And so it's showing that it's going beyond um, our usual smaller circles that we might have had in our coalitions and action teams. Uh, so I'm excited and I welcome all the, the names that I don't recognize. Not that I'm some famous person and should know everybody, <laughs> but I do uh, find it exciting to see a lot more people from outside of our circles hearing this message. Um, and, I, and one of the speakers yesterday, I know um, Stacy brought a few quotes up. One that really stood out to me was how COVID is something that's come alongside what everybody already is already dealing with in life. Mm -hmm. And so whatever we've gone through our journeys, um, our traumas, our daily stresses, COVID is not on top of it. It's right alongside it. All those other things are still there. And so I just appreciate you, Shannon, your, your message today. And, and I did take advantage of the, some of those stress relievers. And I have to admit my camera was off because I, I almost fell asleep a couple of times. I got nice and relaxed. So thank you for that. And uh, I'm going to shut off my camera now and I will stay awake. <laughs> thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Anyone else? You just have to unmute yourself. Okay, I just wanted to say that there was a lot of material. So um, you cannot say that you didn't offer many ideas and lots of materials to apply and create um, the, the concept elsewhere. And I think that's nice that you could bring that whole concept all over the world. And uh, that's really nice. I thought that was great. Thank you so much for that feedback. Truly, it is. It you know this fits everybody, right? Everybody. We all. The world needs us desperately right now. Desperate. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, the world needs it. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Well, you look at what do you think? We're good? Okay. All right. Um, well, thank you all, everyone, for attending our wonderful, wonderful presentation workshop today. Thank you, Stacy. It's nice to see you again. And Shannon, nice to meet you today. Awesome. Such wonderful information. I always feel so inspired. I'm going to go run and do things. And you know, I work in the hospital now, so I'm working with brand new parents who are so overwhelmed with this new baby. And you know, my job is to help them with breastfeeding. I think that's like the first way to get them to fall in love with each other. So um, I will continue to share this message and hopefully all of you will take this and run with it because it's so important. Um, so thank you all for attending. Before you go, we'd like to ask you to click on the link that is in the chat for the program evaluation. Um, and I would like to share with you about some upcoming programs that continue our growing resilience series in the new year. Uh, CCE of Delaware will be hosting a monthly series of webinars that you are free to attend. The registration is required. Topics range from self-care to resilience in the time of global crisis. Everyone who attended today's conference or yesterday will receive details with a link to register via their email. Lastly, we would like to invite you to connect with us if you are interested in joining a learning collaborative. Information about that and who to connect with will be shared via email in the coming days. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you.
Scarlett, and thank you, uh, Shannon and Stacy and Yulika. And Yulika is just amazing. I don't know, we can't all applause at once, but really, all this has happened because Yulika has been guiding us from her. I'm assuming you're in your bedroom, Yulika, but uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, wishing you all wonderful holiday seasons, whatever you're celebrating, uh, 2020 style in our little Zoom room. But anyway, uh, wishing you all wonderful holidays and really praying that 2021 looks a little different <laughs> than this one does, but we'll do what we can. Thank you all so much. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all so very much, yeah. Thank you. Nice to see you.